we are reading about Shri Krishna Sundararai. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shri Krishna Sundararai was the son of Sri Rashikara Mohan Rai of village Kriya, district Pavan. He held some high office in state Kakina. But he realized the transient character of the world and became indifferent to it. He took initiation from Sri Vaikunta Goswami, a descendant of Advaita Acharya, and began to do bhajana. His bhajana consisted mainly of Nama Kirtana and Lila Kirtana. He became Siddha through Kirtana. During his kirtana, his only son, Shyamasundar, used to play on Mridanga. Shyamasundar died suddenly. Rai, Raya Prabhu shed no tears on his death. On returning from the cremation ground after cremation, he sat down to perform kirtana, playing himself on Mridanga. When people came for condolence, they were surprised to see him playing on Mridanga. They stood aghast, aghast and did not know what to say. Raya Prabhu said casually, Mahaprabhu had given me a, a Mridanga player. He has taken him away. What can I do? <laughs> there are numerous examples of the Siddha state of Raya Prabhu. Once at the insistence of Banamali Raya, the Raja, of Tadasa, he went to stay with him for some time in Banavari Nagara. He realized that there was some impurity in Banamaliraya's heart. In order to remove the impurity, he pretended to take leave of him and said, Panamali, now I will take leave of you. Before taking leave, let me embrace you once. As he embraced him, his impurity was gone. Corripulation appeared on his body and goosebumps and tears began to flow from his eyes he said with a voice choked with emotion Rabhu do not go stay here for some more time and shower your mercy upon this fallen soul he stayed on for some while. Bhava through a hug. We know how Goranga and Nityananda did that. Also, they were just telling everyone, Haribo, and they were hugging everyone. 
And this hug was important part because through that they were showing love and giving giving love to them. A Brahmin suffered from acute stomach ache. All kinds of treatment failed to cure him. At last, he went to Vaidyanath uh, Dam and lay before the temple of Lord Shiva for a number of days without taking food or water and praying all the time for mercy. Shiva said to him in a dream, You go to Udhunya, where lives a sadhu named Krishna Sundar Raya. He will cure you. He went to Raya Prabhu and told him about his ailment and the command of Shiva. Raya Prabhu said, You rub in your body the dust of the place where Kirtana is performed on Ekadashi. Chant Harinama and observe fast on Ekadashi. Your disease will be cured. He did the same and was cured. So he was cured by following this instruction. In Udhunia Hatakola, there lived a prostitute whose name was Sahachari. She had wounds all over her body. No treatment was of any avail. She went to Raya Prabhu and spoke to him about her plight. He said, give up prostitution. Leave the place where prostitutes live. Here, in this courtyard, Kirtana is performed on Ekadash. Sweep the courtyard every day and rub its dust on your body. She also did likewise and was cured. In Udhunia, there lived a fisherman. He was so unfortunate that whenever he went on fishing, no fish was caught. He became a debt debtor. I mean, the, the person who is in a, in a debt. The debt went on increasing. The money lender stopped giving him debt loans. Yeah. He went to Raya Prabhu and said, Prabhu, I am so unfortunate that whenever I spread my net to catch fish, no fish is caught. What should I do? Raya Prabhu said, Oh, Mahaprabhu does not yeah. want that you should. Maybe mute or yeah. okay. <laughs> Raya Prabhu said, Mahaprabhu does not want that you should do the work of fishermen. If I don't, how I will maintain myself and my family? You chant Harinama 
Mahaprabhu will look after your family. The fisherman gave up fishing. He took initiation in Harinama from Raya Prabhu and began to chant. People began to call him Vaikunta Bhakta. Vaikunta Bhakta started living on alms. Whenever he went to any house and said Radha Govinda, he got Bhiksha in sufficient quantity. Donation. Donation, yeah, Bhiksha. That Raja, Rajarshi Vanamali Raya was pleased with his bhakti and paid off his debts. With the blessings of Raya Prabhu, Vaikunta Bhakta never had to do any fishing. Sri Shashibushana, the landlord of uh, Chakahana uh, Gali, had uh, heard that Raya Prabhu was a Siddha Mahatma. He went to him with the purpose of testing his power as a Siddha Purusha, mm -hmm. testing his power as a Siddha Purusha. He was at that time engaged in conversation with some devotees. Shashibushana sat down and began to watch everything with a critical eye. While he was watching, a frog came hoping, hoping and sat down under a stand for water pitcher. Just one second. My. Yes. Give me one second because okay. Thinking something happened in the book. Oh, okay, okay. So, a poisonous snake came after it, in, meaning that frog, after the frog. Everyone ran away to see the snake. Actually, everyone ran away seeing the snake. But Raya Prabhu remained sitting. He caught the snake by its tail and said to the king, the frog. I said to the frog, sorry. <laughs> said to the frog, do not fear. Go away fearlessly. The frog went. The snake remained living there. You can continue. I will continue. The frog went. The snake remained lying there like one that was dead. Raya Prabhu said to his grandson, Gora, go, go in and bring some milk and banana. Gora brought some milk and banana in a bowl. 
Raya Prabhu placed the bowl before the snake and said, Eat, since I have deprived you of your prey. The snake started eating. After eating, it again remained lying there, still and motionless. Raya Prabhu continued talking with the devotees. After the talks were over, he looked at the snake and said, Oh, you are still lying there. Oh, you are still lying here. Now go to your place. The snake crawled away. Shashi Bhushana Babu thought that perhaps Raya Prabhu had come to know his mind and it was to satisfy him that he had shown that Leela. Since then, he gave up his skeptical attitude and began to believe in God and his devotees. For a long time, Raya Prabhu lived in the house of Banamali Rai. On Ekadashi, he used to perform kirtan with a group of devotees. On the Krishna Ekadashi day in the month of Vaishaka in 1893, the devotees arrived late for kirtan. He said to them, now you will not have to come for kirtan on Ekadashi. You can always make merry with your wife and children. The devotees could not understand why Raya Prabhu said like that. Two days later, on Trayodashi, Raya Prabhu read Chaitanya Charitamrita before the devotees. The topic was the de deliverance of Jagai Madai. After the reading, he said, Alas, Mahaprabhu has not yet delivered a sinner like me. The devotees went to their homes. Raya Prabhu took prasad at night and lay down on the bed. He slept for a while. Then he got up. He called his grandson and said, Gora, go and call all the devotees. Let them perform kirtana, for the time of my departure has come. Gora brought the devotees, but on hearing from Gora about Raya Prabhu's departure, they stood perturbed and forgot about kirtan. Raya Prabhu said indignantly, Oh, no one is kind to me. He then started doing japa. On his gesticulation, the devotees carried him before Radha Vinoda, the deity of Banamali Rai. While doing japa before Radha Vinoda, his legs became cold. Slowly, the rest of his body also became cold and white. But his tongue continued to move in japa. Sankirtan began. At about 2 a.m., he left the world with Sankirtan and entered the celestial Rajadam to serve Radha Vinod. How intimate was Raya Prabhu with Radha Vinod? We come to know from an episode that took place after he had passed away. The episode is like this. Kamini Babu often used to go to Banavari Nagara for the darshan of Radha Vinod and Raya Prabhu. Once, when he went there, he was surprised to see a hookah with a long pipe placed before Radha Vinod. He inquired from Banamali Rai about the mystery of the hookah. He said, 
Hookah is uh, Hookah is this uh, like tobacco pipe so, this yeah. like um pot with the pipe for smoking yeah yes um he said on the so he said so bana malirai said about the mystery of this hookah that was placed in front of Radha Binod. He said, on the last Amavasya day, when I went for the darshan of Radha Binod, the Pujari said, today, after offering boga to Radha Binod, I was sitting before him and doing japa. I napped for a while. During the nap, I heard Vinodaji saying, Get the hookah. These people have stopped my hookah. I used to go and smoke elsewhere. <laughs> For the last four days, I have not been offered hookah even there. Even then, Kamini Babu could not understand the mystery. Then Banamali Rai said, You see, the story goes back to the time when my father brought Radha Vinod from another devotee who used to serve him with great devotion. The devotee used to smoke hookah. Before he smoked, he offered it to Radha Vinod. <laughs> Therefore, Radha Vinoda also got into the habit of smoking hookah. <laughs> When he came to us, his hookah came with him, and the service of hookah continued. After the death of my father, I discontinued the service because I thought that it was not according to the Shastras. Then he began to go to Raya Prabhu and smoke with him. <laughs> Raya Prabhu used to smoke hookah. He practiced Raganunga Bhakti, in which the guiding principle is love, not the rules and regulations of the Shastras. He used to be always drowned in the lila of Radha Vinod. He knew that Radha Vinod loved to smoke hookah, so he thought Radha Vinod would be a good companion while smoking and began to offer hookah to him before he smoked himself. After the passing away, Raya Prabhu, Radha Vinod had to go without hookah for four days. Therefore, he asked the Pujari to provide him with hookah. I brought out the hookah and arranged for his hookah service both morning and evening after Rajbog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, already. So, <laughs> interesting story. And this last part is really interesting because it shows how actually for love there is no matter of rules and regulations. Not I mean Radha and Krishna they are above all that. They're uh, ruled by love. Yeah. This is so interesting when we hear like this. <laughs> and the devotees, I mean, the first devotee, uh, even was he was smoking, so he loved his Ishtadev so much. So he offered them also a cigarette, how to say, you know, <laughs> so, offer them uh, this hookah. <laughs> actually, uh, that devotee hooked him on hookah. <laughs> yeah. And they got habit. Yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, this is interesting that often uh, we could read stories that Ishtadev asks from his devotee some things. And then they get habit that they are getting this. So if devotee cannot provide that anymore, <laughs> Then problems start. Then they start to appear in dreams and like that, asking what's going on. 
But we also saw the stories where uh, Ishtadev is asking for something and the devotee says, no, no, you will not get it. Yeah, now you, ask, you are asking this and tomorrow you will ask something more. <laughs> Did this happened to Sanatana Goswami when he got Madan Mohan and Madan Mohan wanted to get some little salt, you know. And then Sanatana Goswami said, hey, now you're asking for salt and tomorrow you will ask for fancy things. I have no time. I have to write my books. You, you should uh, arrange this for yourself if you want. <laughs> so then we all know the story how uh, he actually did arrange this for himself. He made this big boat of, uh, that was full of salt uh, get stuck in Yamuna in front of the temple of Madan uh, Not temple, there was no temple in front of the tree where uh, Sanatana Goswami was... Uh, actually living under the tree and he hung Madame Mohan in a basket on this tree and uh, because there was drought and there was no uh, rain so this boat got stuck and this merchant who had this um, big uh, load of salt that he wanted to sell in Matura he actually didn't know what to do and then a little boy appeared and he asked this little boy, hey, what can I do? And he said, oh, just go, go over to Sanatana Goswami. He can help you. And then he went there and he said, what shall I do? And Sanatana Goswami said, oh, I don't know. You should ask Madan Mohan. You pray to him and he will arrange something. So he prayed to Madan Mohan. And then a huge rain came. And then this boat got unstuck. And he managed to go and sell all his salt. And then, because he was so grateful, he, he then arranged for the temple of Mother Mohan to be built as a form of gratitude. So, sorry, I just jumped in with little story. I hope you don't mind. But this is how devotee, the... Um, the, this sweet relationship between Krishna, Radha Shyam, Radha Mohan, and their devotees somehow is very specific. And actually, they, it is um, many times an, an arrangement for some other happenings that are also a plan of Radha, Radha Mohan, Radha, Radha, Radha Mohan, in this case, he wanted not just salt, but also some temple for himself. <laughs> <laughs> but if there was no Sanatana Goswami to tell him, hey, do it yourself. I don't have time, you know, to put salt in your chapati because he was offering him some dry chapatis with no salt. Uh, it's not even in the form of a chapati. It's like a thick, some dough with water. I tried that once. They still make it there at the temple of Madame Mohan. It's very hard and dry. And you, you can break your teeth, you know, <laughs> when you try to eat that. So imagine Madame Mohan was fed every day with this. And he said, oh, can you please give me a little salt? Oh, sorry, no salt. Do it yourself. <laughs> and then he made a temple <laughs> because of the story, right? But these things are so sweet. If we get in connection with our Ishtade, we have we can experience many uh, pastimes, our personal pastimes with them. <laughs> Um, go to that. You are muted. muted. <laughs> so nice, so good. Really, this is the thing. We have to increase our feelings. They are teaching. Feeling makes closeness. Feeling is the relation, growth. 
to live near. Near is also feeling. So to be in the feelings, real partnership, which real understanding goes, love goes. Maybe sometimes sweet and sometimes salty. Exchange comes. But feeling has to go. So you see, there is salty also. There was no hookah, salty, but sweet also. So both in the closeness, it happens. So we have to close with our is there and with the feelings. And we have to enjoy the salty and sweet food. Thank you. Very nice. More past time or what is time is over or what? Three o'clock here? Yeah, here is. I'm waiting for one week to listen from you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, because Thank if it's the next one, we will not be able to finish it. So it, it's too long. The next one is it long? Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's see if it's it's short or long. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's long, yeah. Long. It's very long. Yeah. The next one is very okay. long. Okay. Take care. Bye.